Have a Joy Burnett on the Hill tonight. Thank you. Now let's bring in former federal prosecutor Nima Romani joining us live from L.A. Nima, Mr. Trump says he has four days to speak to the grand jury. He may do it. He may not. Do you think another indictment is imminent here? I do. And Jack Smith sent that target letter before the classified documents indictment as well. So it's not required under federal law, but some prosecutors like to use it. And Jack Smith's one of them. So it gives a criminal target soon to be defended the opportunity to testify before the grand jury and present evidence. But like Alba Joy said, most criminal defendants don't do so because anything you say can only be used against you. It can't really help you stave off an indictment usually. Now, Trump's lawyers may try to meet with Department of Justice officials to try to stave off an indictment. That's what they did with Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg and Jack Smith before the documents case unsuccessfully. But I don't expect Trump to be appearing before any grand jury anytime soon. What do you think the most likely charges are here? Because he said this is the January 6th grand jury, but my understanding is Jack Smith is looking at January 6th and also attempts to hold on to power, maybe illegally. Do you think we're talking incitement on the 6th? Do you think it's more related to illegal acts holding on to power? I think it's going to relate to the attempts to overthrow the election results. So, you know, looking at Jack Smith, he's been pretty conservative in his charging decisions. If you look at the documents case, for instance, he only charged documents that were there when federal agents executed the search warrant. He didn't uh, charge any documents that may have been unlawfully held and returned voluntarily in response to the grand jury subpoena. Same thing with the venue issue. He chose to file there in South Florida and, and avoid litigation over where proper venue would be. So I would expect him to take a similar cautious approach in the 2020 election Meaning case. What? So that means the charges I expect to see are conspiracy to defraud the United States and 18 U.S.C. 371 conspiracy. I also expect to see charges like obstructing an official proceeding. The Department of Justice likes that and they charge the Capitol rioters, many of them with that. I don't expect to see seditious conspiracy. That tends to be a little bit more difficult to prove and might be a reach in this case. But it's going to be interesting to see not only what conspiracies are charged, but who else, if anyone, is charged in those conspiracies? I was going to ask, like, who would that involve? Would it be you were in the Oval Office talking with people like Rudy Giuliani about how you were going to make this happen? Is it you cornered Mike Pence on the balcony on January 5th to make this happen? You picked up the phone and called, you know, this state official. What, what does that involve? I think if there are conspirators, and you don't have to have conspirators named in the indictment, you can have unindicted co-conspirators, but I would expect to see the Rudy Giuliani's, John Eastman's of the world, folks who are really pushing forward the, these different types of legal theories to overthrow the election. And of course, as we saw with Walt Nada, it could be someone that comes out of nowhere that's charging a conspiracy. So the I question see. is, what do these individuals know and are they cooperating or not? So that's gonna be interesting as well. And Mr. Trump says, I have the right to contest an election I truly believed was rigged. Does he? Well, that's also Mike Pence's argument. He's saying, listen, this isn't criminal activity. This is, I was relying on the advice of my lawyers. And they were telling me that this legal theory was appropriate. Of course, Trump is going to say that factually the election was rigged. But, you know, there's doing things illegally, right? And we saw those charges in Michigan. But if you're going to engage in fraudulent activity, that's crossing the line from legal advocacy and it becomes criminal behavior. Mm, so even if you, to your core, believed it, it's still illegal if it if you were advised in some way that that was not true well absolutely and you have folks in the oval office who are telling trump including former president mike pence that you cannot do this this is unlawful this violates the constitution right. so those are the types of uh, witnesses and evidence that are helpful for Jack Smith, people that are telling the former president, you can't do this, this is unlawful. That's knowledge, that's intent, and that's how you get an indictment. Nima, this special prosecutor, Jack Smith, is going hard at Trump. Yet many in Congress complain Hunter Biden got a sweetheart deal. He escapes jail time. Whistleblowers are saying the Biden family, as we speak, is being protected. Is Trump being treated unfairly? 
Hunter Biden did get a good deal. I mean, as a former prosecutor, you rarely see misdemeanors. You don't see those types of diversion programs that you see in state court. And rarely do you see addict in possession charge. I know that the disposition was just the tax misdemeanors. But what I will say in this, in Hunter Biden's defense, he cooperated. He got a deal soon. And then when it comes to tax charges, you often don't see people charged criminally. Often they're uh, resolved administratively through an audit or civilly. For a criminal defendant to face federal tax charges, you really have to do a lot in terms of evasion or obstruction. I think one of Donald Trump's biggest problems across the board is he has not cooperated with the Department of Justice. The National Archives asked for the documents for more than a year. Then they said, then they said, we're going to refer you to the DOJ if you don't comply. So had he complied like Pence or President Biden, he might not be in this situation. Which right now being hashed out are these whistleblowers who say we could have gotten more information, we could have made more connections, but we weren't allowed to go there. I think they're going to be talking in the coming days. So, you know, I, that continues. Bottom line here. Mr. Trump lists all these other accusations on his true social thing that he successfully fought, Russiagate, collusion, two impeachments, and, and other things. You look at Quinnipiac's poll last month of Americans, and 62% of Americans say that they do think some of these federal indictments are politically motivated. Now, a lot of people also said, you should be indicted. Is this going to be the same thing, or is this somehow different? No, this is chance. I mean, this is where law and politics intersect. We're really in uncharted legal waters here. So there are a significant percentage of Americans and potential jurors that are going to believe that Donald Trump is being treated unfairly. And, you know, even though we want to do the right thing as prosecutors and former prosecutors, the practical reality is every single prosecutor in this country is either elected or appointed by someone who is. So. Nima Romani, a former federal prosecutor awfully useful to talk to you tonight. Thank you. Thanks, James. Thanks for having me as always.